we're back in Wales and spoiler alert, it's not raining. Today we're in and around Welshpool, enjoying all things Welsh, like exploring castles, seeing sheep and daffodils and the green green grass of home. We even venture into a cockpit, Wales. If you don't know us, I'm Rachel, Mr Maturity is Wills and we are Postcard and a Pint, boldly going where everyone else has been before, just our way. So let's get stuck into Welshpool and all it has to offer. But first we have to get there. Come on, Wrexham! Ooh, this looks like our first stop and a nice big free car park. Champion! We've arrived and the first thing we're doing today is a heritage railway. Let's go! Yes, we're riding the Welsh Pool and the Llanbia Light Railway, which reopened yesterday for the season. Look at that! Proper old-fashioned tickets. Thank you! Of course there's a gift shop, and although there were plenty of dragons in the shop, there weren't many sheep. Everyone knows a Welsh gift shop is busting at the seams with sheep and dragons and Snowdonia cheese. Never mind, let's move on and find our train. There it is, the 11.15 being pulled into the station. The railway still has the original locomotives working the line. Today we've got the Earl, built in 1902 and still going strong all these years later. We watched the Earl uncouple then take on some water. Get yourself ready, kid. You've got a lot of carriages to pull up a very steep gradient. Full of idiots like her. And him. All full of water, it was time for the Earl to shift ends, ready to pull the train to Llanbaer Corailian. This little engine traverses one of the steepest gradients in Britain. And for those who remember, it reminds me of Ivor the Engine. We're showing our age there. I think it's now time to get on board and get our tickets clipped. Badly. Couple back up. And while all this is happening, I think it's time to learn a bit of history about this line. Now you make sure you fasten that tight, love. Apparently it's steep. And Rach, some history please. In the late 1800s, getting goods and produce out of these valleys was a real problem. Everything had to be carried by horse into Welshpool and shipped there from the Cambrian Railway. Funds for this railway came from the Light Railways Act of 1896, subscriptions and gifts of lands from local landowners. In 1901, work started on this narrow gauge railway. Narrow to save money. Money, however, was woefully short. On the 4th of April 1903, the first passenger train ran in the pouring rain. Was this a bad omen? Look, it's lovely out there. Yes, for once, it's not raining in Wales. But back to the history. By 1908, the line was in financial difficulty. And by 1923, passengers were almost non-existent due to a competing bus service. The passenger service was discontinued in 1931, although the goods traffic saw a revival with World War II, and the line was still running in 1948. The last passenger service ran in 1956, but plans were already in place to preserve this unique railway. All that history has made us hungry. It's sandwiches and a sausage roll on a train. Life doesn't get much better than that. Yes, it does. It's lambing season in Wales. There was work going on on the line at Castell Carinian. Cheers, lads. Are you on your dinner break? Over roads, through green fields, past farms and country lanes. I know we moan about the rain a lot, but it's that that makes Wales so green over the River Banwy that we learnt washes away this bridge quite regularly. Um, not today, please. The river does seem very full, as it has rained so much of late. And then we arrived at Llanvaer Carinian. The journey had taken 45 minutes and had been beautiful. It was now time for the Earl to stock up on coal, whilst we had an hour to spend in this lovely little town. See you in an hour, Earl, who incidentally is named after the fourth Earl of Powys, who did so much to get this railway off the ground. There is a tea room and gift shop here, but more of that later. We want to take a walk and see what we can find. So how's today going, Rach? We've arrived at Llanbaer Carlinian and we're going to go and see what's here. Come with us. That's Carlinian. You've added an L, you idiot. But that aside, this place looks charming. 
The Church of St Mary's sits proudly above the town and was calling us to visit. The daffodils were out, the streets were quaint and, because it was Sunday, everything was closed. It was such a lovely town though. I had to get down into the daffodils to get this shot. Lovely. There's been a church on this site since 1239. This church was rebuilt in 1868 and it was open. It was beautiful inside and we chatted to some of the congregation who were so friendly. They invited us to look around. We really enjoyed the beautiful stained glass. It had been a short but sweet visit and we started to make our way back to the train. So a few words from you, Rach, and a weather update. What a beautiful little town that was, and people in the church were so friendly, and what a gorgeous church. And can we just talk about the weather? We kind of actually remember the last time we did a day out and didn't get soaked. It's glorious. So glorious, in fact, we feel a trip to the station's tea room is in order for some hot chocolate, carrot cake, and a toasted tea cake. Hmm, that didn't last long. How's the tea cake, Wills? Good lad. We had a quick browse around the gift shop. Some steam train condiments, some dragons, but no sheep. They're all obviously out in the fields lambing. That yellow locomotive is imaginatively named number 17 and hails from Bremen in Germany. We were only there the other week. Back we go. How's it been? What an absolutely beautiful way to spend a morning. We paid £25 per person for this, which is a bit pricey, but they have to maintain the railway. It was a two and a half to three hour experience. What a beautiful place at the end of the line. I don't know what's going on with the weather today, but it is absolutely stunning. It's hot, top morning out. We stood outside on the back carriage, posed for a selfie and watched the world go by. The carriages we are on were donated by companies in Hungary and Austria and are a perfect viewing platform for the surrounding scenery. Hey up, we're on the bridge that got washed away again. Phew, made it. Oh, Wills is in a post tea cake slump. Wake up lad, you've got to tell the good people of YouTube what you think of this experience. What a lovely journey, I mean, what's not to like? There's lambs, there's pheasants, there's sheep, there's blue skies, there's a green fields. Perfect day out. It certainly has been so far, and this is just the first bit. In no time at all, we were back in Welshpool, and what's that, Rach? You've got sunburn? In Wales? In March? Champion. That was absolutely brilliant. What a great morning. We're now going to head into Welshpool, see what we can find there, and then we're off to Powys Castle. A few minutes' drive saw us parked up and ready to explore. What's that, Wills? Welsh poo? Do you do those? Regular as clockwork. Oh, L. Let's carry on. Welshpool has some really charming buildings. This one was a former manor house of the Earl of Powys and a coaching stop. So that's the railway and now a coaching inn. The Earls of Powys have been a useful lot. There were some lovely shops, but we were looking for the cockpit. Found it! Now tell us some history about this very unique building, Rach. This small hexagonal building is fascinating. It was once used for cockfighting. What fighting? Behave, Wills. It's one of very few cockfighting buildings left in the UK now as cockfighting was made illegal in 1849. It's now a women's institute. Cockfighting, women's institute? I'm saying nothing. Sorry, people of Welshpool, you can't take him anywhere. Unusually, many of these Georgian buildings have brick facades built with bricks brought in by the Montgomery Canal or the River Severn in the town's heyday as a transport hub. Sadly, like most high streets now, there are lots of empty units. The Market Hall still seems to be thriving though, and is a beautiful building. There are some lovely older buildings too, and fascinating passages. We would like to visit again and see everything open. This is the Mermaid Inn, a 16th century merchant's house. Sadly, this beautiful pub, the Talbot, was closed. It was time to start making our way back to the car via yet another St Mary's Church. Welshpool will be back when you're open. So Welshpool, a quiet market town, but how did it get its name? So we know the burning question on all of your minds, Welshpool, does it have a Welsh? Pool. Well, simple answer, no it doesn't. It's actually called in Welsh a trallung, which means marshy or boggy ground. 
So when the English rocked up and the Welsh said, hi, uh, welcome to Trashung, the English went, we can't say that. Uh, we'll call it pool. And the Welsh went, uh, all right then. Anyway, the Victorians came along years later and went, uh, do you know there is a pool? It's down in Dorset. And the English went, oh yeah, so it is. Uh, we'll call it Welsh pool. Genius. But if they'd have watched our video on how to say Welsh place names, they'd have been all right. Ah, uh, if only medieval man had access to YouTube. This is St Mary's Church. Sadly, this wasn't open today. Inside this church is a memorial to William Morgan, translator of the Bible into Welsh. In the churchyard are the Commonwealth graves of five British soldiers of World War I and a soldier and airman from World War II. We'll be back, St Mary's, but now it's time to see yet more from the Earl of Powys. That's Powys Castle. The present castle was built in the 13th century, but was redeveloped in the early 20th century by the fourth Earl of Powys, George Herbert, the same fella who helped so much in the development of the railway. Along with the architect George Bodley, George Herbert began modernising the castle, introducing electric lighting and a hot water central heating system, but decorating the rooms in a 17th century style, more fitting to the castle. There was no filming allowed inside today, but Wills has been here on another occasion when he could film. It's stunning. The castle looks out over beautiful countryside, and the gardens at this castle are said to be the most important and magnificent in Wales. George Herbert, the fourth Earl of Powys, lived to the grand age of 90 and outlived both of his sons. He bequeathed this castle to the National Trust, and now everyone can enjoy it. Although, if you do stop at the cafe for tea and a cake, you'll be harassed by peacocks. They are beautiful, though. So that's peacocks, peahens, the Earl of Powys and his trains, town and castle. What a lovely day out it had been. Over to you, Rach. Well, that was just a flying visit. What a beautiful place. We definitely want to come back here. I think in the summer, spend longer in the castle and see the gardens when they're in full bloom. But now, it's time for a pint. Wasn't that a lovely day? It was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah, and what did you think of the train? The train was lovely. It was the weather that did yeah. it for me. We've had so many wet days and cold. It's been yeah. really cold of late, and the one day we the, were going out filming, it, it the was The forecast lovely, wasn't it? was wet again. Yeah, it was, yeah. But it was just so nice to be back in Wales. We've yeah. been so ship, 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 and that's been brilliant, don't get me wrong, but to be back in Wales again, in do nature. a steam train. We haven't done one of those for ages yeah it was good fun it was a really lovely relaxing day and that beautiful um, little town yeah, that little oh, town of that, the place I can't pronounce <laughs> that was I'm talking you to be honest Karainian, in the video. Yeah, that was like that. beautiful and again places we'd like to go back to when they're open mm. Welsh pool was nice <coughs> some bit croaky <laughs> Welsh pool was nice it still had a few empty units it does look like it's high street has suffered a little bit but it looks like it's got a great community and it's another place we want to go to when it's open. I learned the fact yesterday as well. I was talking in work about okay. the cockpit, yeah. about cockfighting. Now, I know it was banned in whatever it was, 1849, yeah. something like that. But it wasn't banned because of the cruelty to the animals. It was banned because of the rowdiness of the of, of the crowd. Of the crowd. Everyone <laughs> just got drunk and started fighting each other. Oh, it's disgusting. Anyway. But anyway, what a fascinating building to still have one of those yeah. left. It was amazing. Yeah. For a women's institute. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You did like that little gag. You did like that little mm. gag. And then, yeah, Powers Castle. There was a bit disappointing that we didn't have more time because it, it shut at four because it was a Sunday. We literally had three quarters of an hour, yeah. Mm. And what was a shame was we weren't allowed to film inside. So. Now, we did show you a couple of shaky clips because I did a job there a couple of years back and I had some really bad footage, so apologies for that, <laughs> but never mind. Right, let's move on to other things. We've got some shout-outs to do. We have got a shout-out to Ruth. Yes, our new Patreon. Cheers, Ruth. Cheers, Welcome Ruth. to the Patreon family. You too will get all the gossip, the news <laughs> first. So if anybody else wants to join the Patreon to find out what's going on, do, we're and about, we're about to film one We're about as well to now. film a Patreon video next with our latest updates on our travel plans. Oh, now, yeah. you've got a thank you. I'd like to say a big thank you to our mate Ken Finnegan mm. from over the pond there, who got me Iron Maiden Christmas jumper. <laughs> yeah. I mean, March. He's wearing a Christmas jumper in March. We I do know, know this, I know. but he promised he'd really wear it for Ken. It, That's mate. really, really thank nice. You. Have we got anything else to say? I don't know. Well, can we say we're going away? 
this weekend? Oh, yes, we're going away. Not tomorrow, the day after. We're going to Dorset. So when you watch this, we'll be there. We'll be in Dorset. Oh, doing the famous um, five oh, trail, or the Inner Blanton trail. I'm seeing some things in Dorset, like Durdle Door and that. Durdle Things Dora. I'm, I'm, I'm Harry really Potter, excited. I used to holiday there as a child. I've never been. And he's never been. I said, oh, we're going somewhere on the way down as well. Oh, yeah. We're going to Stonehenge. Hopefully. Hopefully. Which, um, I've driven past it on whatever road goes past it so many Always times. Always wanted to go to Stonehenge. But never gone in, so we're going to go and see that as well. Mm. Right, should and we have a the... picnic. And have a picnic. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it's it? It's very exciting. Let's hope it doesn't rain, hey? I think it will. I think it will. <laughs> so if you would like this video, that would be lovely. Oh, yeah, if you could hit the button, do the subscribe thing, leave a comment, leave got a Patreon, comment, got the... yeah. all of that, all of that sort of stuff. We've had some lovely comments on all our cruise videos. We've met some new people. We need people. to go on a new cruise. People watch us. <laughs> people like us on a cruise. <laughs> you watch this this will bomb this video oh, back well. in Wales again Doesn't oh matter. well we enjoyed ourselves we like it. it's making the memories for us anyway shut up Rachel and Wales as we always say in Postcard and the Pines <laughs> cheers, cheers to, to the, the good, good times, times. got the joke book out what is brown has four legs and a trunk I don't know a mouse coming back from holiday oh